Okay, so I want to uh, welcome everybody on our uh, Mastering Technology webinar. Uh, my name is Jan Pikul. I'm responsible. Uh, I'm working for Kistel Eastern Europe, which is based in in uh, Prague, Czech Republic, and I'm responsible uh, for Fastening Technology, uh, which is all the uh, quality assurance products which support uh, uh, Process control and uh, assembly assembly process. Just a few uh, organization information at the beginning that the, uh, the webinar will be recorded and then published on our website www.kistler.com. All attendees are now muted, but if you want to ask any question, just uh, use uh, Q&A section. After the, the meeting, I will try to uh, reply, or if that would be impossible, then I will try to uh, reply directly to the uh, to the person who, who asked. So this is the agenda for today. I, I will start with some general information about recall actions and cost of the of the quality. Then uh, I will continue with some basic uh, information about physics of the fastening technology. And uh, then we go to to the control uh, of the of the process and uh, how to increase quality. Uh, during the uh, production process and today we I'm going to focus on the inspect pro our system which support uh, um, support us in uh, in this process so we can we can use the smart small unit for each uh, stage of the of the production here is the Kistler at glance uh, so I want to tell you a few words about our company. So uh, Kistler is a market leader in piezoelectric uh, measuring technology uh, for the industry and for the research institute. So we are based uh, in the in the, all the markets, uh, all the markets in the in the world, and uh, our focus is definitely uh, automotive industry, but. We also uh, we also support the general industry as and also uh, many laboratories so from research and development. Uh, here in the in the region we are based in uh, in Prague, Czech Republic. So our sales office is uh, is located there. Um, but for fastening technology, our uh, production center and competence center is located in Germany. In Remscheid, so all these, uh, let's say, experts in uh, in our fastening technology, uh, they are located in Germany and they are very close cooperating with uh, with German uh, industry uh, industry uh, uh, market. So here are some uh, examples of the recall actions. So I want to. I want to just emphasize, but probably everybody uh, of you uh, knows that uh, the cost of the um, of the quality it's very uh, linked to the to the stage of of the production. And here we have uh, some examples that the uh, the producers had to. Uh, Call uh, their customers back to the uh, to the workshop and repair some production failures. We can find these uh, examples in the in the local uh, newspapers and also in uh, in the internet. And that's uh, also the story. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had uh, I had a meeting with my. Uh, German colleague, and he told me uh, his story from uh, from his uh, from his uh, area. There was uh, a car mechanic uh, who was given 15 years uh, prison sentence. The 
it was caused by the accident uh, uh, with, uh, with two motorcycles. And the reason was that untightened or bad tightened uh, uh, oil plug. So uh, the car uh, has visited a local workshop and uh, changed the oil. After that, uh, uh, when it, the driver left the, the, uh, the work, uh, the garage, uh, the oil plug uh, just uh, fall down and all the oil dropped down on the, on the road. Unfortunately, just after the, after the car, uh, two motorbike, uh, two motorbikes was, was driven and uh, they slip on this uh, spilled oil and they, one of them hit the, the truck coming uh, from the, from the other, uh, from the other uh, direction. Unfor unfortunately, he was, he was died. So after that, the, the car mechanic was, uh, uh, yeah, he was fined as a, as a person who caused this, uh, this accident. And unfortunately, he went to, to the jail due to the uh, bad Titan uh, screw. So that you can you can imagine the consequence of uh, his family and also family of the of the bike rider. That's uh, it could be easy, uh, let's say, improved by the uh, simple uh, torque tool. And this is uh, something I want to I want to tell uh, today. So uh, now uh, probably you you are aware that the the cost of the uh, of the production errors, they are connected to the stage of the of the production, and it's very cheap and very easy to uh, solve uh, the problem on the research and development uh, stage. So, if there is only a calculation or material change, it cost uh, that that cost it is very very small. Then, when we go to the to the production production area, it's still uh, the cost uh, of of uh, uh, rip, uh, repair or uh, reproduction is it's still uh, reasonable and uh, until the product final product do not uh, leave the, the production site it's uh, it could be it could be repair on the on the uh, reasonable uh, price but if we go to the if the product goes to the to the customer and then we or the producers must uh, do the uh, recall action, and that cost significantly grows. And especially on the top of this uh, of this scale, we have uh, human life and human health. So we have to be uh, careful in this case because in the automotive industry. And Titan screw means sometimes that uh, uh, human life and health is under the under the risk. So now I'd like to tell you something more. Probably you know that, but I I will just uh, uh, repeat something about the basics of the uh, physics in the in the uh, bolted joint. So the aim of our uh, of our process is to uh, connect two, three, or more pieces together with the with the bolted uh, bolted joint. So that means we need uh, some materials and bolt which can uh, keep these uh, parts together during the uh, during the using process. And of course, it must be the the this time should be. Uh, should be longer than just a uh, few days hours and the biggest advantage so why we why we use uh, bolted joints uh, because the uh, connection method is detachable so if necessary we can uh, unscrew the bolt exchange some parts and then uh, fasten it to, together again and then the product could be repaired could be uh, reused again, and we can uh, repeat the process uh, many times. 
So to uh, to keep uh, the part together, we have to create a clamping force or preloading force in the in the bolt. So that means uh, we cannot keep uh, parts together without uh, without the clamping force. And if we do not create a force big enough, then probably after short time of of use the uh, the product uh, the the parts will just uh, disconnect and the product would be would be broken uh, so definitely we have to create the the force but the question is how how big should be that that force and uh, this is something we we have to uh, learn and the engineers just work on that uh, almost every day how how big this force is and the, the problem is on the on the uh, daily life it's not so easy to to control uh, the clamping force we know it must be in the uh, it must the, the force must be must be created but uh, the direct method of the of the measuring is is very difficult and in uh, in the uh, production process the measuring is almost impossible so there is the this is the reason why we measure a torque because this is the um, some kind of uh, indirect method to measure a force we know the relation between uh, torque and force so we can uh, if we know also the uh, friction we can say that the uh, the process is under uh, under control and can be can be controlled only by uh, by the torque. But we have to be aware that all these uh, all these uh, physics uh, values they are known. So torque, force, and then calculation of uh, friction. So here we have the the method how to calculate total friction of the. Um, of the uh, bolted joint. So in every joint, we have two areas where the bolt and, uh, and the, uh, the material is, uh, let's say, creating friction. So the first one is the thread and the friction between uh, bolt thread and material thread. And the second one is uh, thread under the head of the, of the bolt. Uh, here you can see how to calculate the total friction. So we have to know torque and clamping force, which is uh, named as FV. Then, of course, uh, the material uh, physical parameters of the of the bolt uh, we know it's uh, it's easy it's easy to measure. So the calculation it's. Uh, yeah, using the, the computer, it's not so difficult. But first of all, we have to know this very important physics like uh, torque and force. And just for your information, do you know how much energy we lose only for the for the friction? So the general uh, the general uh, experience shows that 50 40 50 percent of the of the energy is lost to the to the friction so it means that uh, without friction we would need only the, the half of the uh, of the torque to to create the same uh, the same uh, preload uh, preload force here we have some example uh, of the uh, relation between uh, force and torque. So as I said, uh, this relation, it's, it's easy to, uh, to measure. And there is one assumption when the uh, total friction coefficient is uh, 0.10. Of course, in the, in the real life, it's, it doesn't look uh, that ideal. So uh, we very, rarely have a, a constant uh, 
constant uh, friction, but just uh, let's start with this. So we know what kind of uh, bolt we have. It's a hexagon head bolt uh, class 8.8. .8. So from this table, from this uh, graph, we know that for the to fasten the, uh, the bolt and uh, the joint, we need 30.2 kilonewton. So when we check the torque we need, add the uh, friction 0 0.10. So we can read the value of torque 32.6 Newton meter. So it means that in the process, if we want to create the uh, clamping force 30 kilonewton, we should use the torque 42.6 Newton meter. But of course, it's not so not so easy because uh, we do not have the uh, exact tool. So uh, every torque tool we use, it has uh, some uh, some tolerance. So that means the uh, repetition and the precision of the tool is is always in some uh, in some area. It's not uh, there is no tool which can which can always repeat the same the same torque value so it means we have some uh, area plus minus five uh, percent for good uh, for good tools that uh, the process can be controlled in this uh, in this small uh, and narrow uh, narrow uh, area then we can we can start the process we do if we do it under control, we still assume that the, the friction is stable. Therefore, we see that the uh, calculated clamping force for us in to, to keep the, uh, the bolt at the joint in the, uh, and the parts together, we, need, we will have the, we will create the, the force from 28.9 to 31.8 kilonewton. So it should be enough to to still uh, produce uh, parts in the in the good conditions, and the spread is about three kilonewton. So definitely, it's it's not a big uh, big dif uh, difference. So now we can go to the uh, to the example where the uh, friction coefficient is not stable. So it can differ from 0 0.10 to 0 0.20. So as you can see, the difference might be definitely bigger because we still can use the same tool, which uh, work with the 5% of the, of the precision, uh, sorry, five plus minus 5% uh, 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 of the precision. And if we go to the, to the lowest point and we, we calculate the 20, 0 0.2, uh, total friction, our lowest uh, uh, force value can be 15.7 kilonewton. Definitely not enough to uh, to keep the the parts together, and the uh, uh, spread of the of the force it's 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 definitely too big. 16.1 kilonewton when our target is uh, at 30. There is uh, definitely uh, not enough. So here you can see how big influence have the uh, friction on the on the fastening process. And definitely there, there is not only the friction and tool in this uh, in this process. In, uh, in this situation we can see how many factors influence on the on the final quality. So the uh, man, machine, method, and material has the uh, significant influence on the on the final quality of the bolted connection. So definitely, all these uh, factors must be under control, and we have a method to to do this, like uh, education and training for the workers. We have some tightening uh, standards 
also the material standards which uh, tell us how to uh, how to test uh, the uh, bolted joint components and we will we will speak about these uh, these methods today we will focus a bit uh, uh, more about the the analyze systems and uh, and the standards uh, international and uh, and producer standards uh, in this uh, let's say automotive industry so here we have some uh basic information about the uh, standards used uh, in uh, in the bolted joint uh, components control so it means that the uh, basic for all these uh, methods is the international standard 16047 which describe how to how to test the bolts and uh, to uh, to test how big and sorry to to calculate how big is the uh, friction coefficient and also how to how to test uh, uh, samples to to uh, find the difference between between uh, the uh, specific products of course uh, basic on that international standard many many producers they uh, designed their own uh, their own uh, company standards to reflect more to the uh, to the production uh, process uh, conditions so as you can see volkswagen mercedes-benz and ford they they are following their own standards but anyhow they are uh, all of them they are based on the on the international standard international standard is used more for uh, bolt producers when they want to compare uh, their results the company standards they uh, they use to to control uh, to to make a quality control of their products of the of the components which are coming to to their uh, to their facilities here we have some uh, systems produced by by kistler uh, which are used to uh, to make uh, easier life for the uh, for the people which are uh, which need to to create to to control the uh, the bolt uh, bolt nuts and uh, and screws uh, on the top you can see the horizontal analyze systems where we can test every uh, every uh, standard which already exist in the in the world of course it depends on the on the rotation speed on the on the final uh, final uh, force but definitely all the standards are possible to to be measured on this uh, on this machine here on the on the left side we have a drive there is a torque angle uh, uh, torque and angle uh, transducer and there in this in this metal housing is a, a force sensor plus a thread torque sensor which is additional so in this machine we can we can separate uh, we can separate friction on the uh, under the head of the bolt and friction on the um, on the thread on the right side you can see our uh, let's say portable uh, small system which is called inspect pro so using the force sensor and analyze range to to measure uh, torque we can uh, we can calculate the uh, friction coefficient uh, total friction coefficient in this case uh, on almost uh, every every ball so the, the, the limit is only the uh, maximum uh, force which can be uh, measured on this uh, on this sensor the, the all the calculation is done by the uh, by the uh, system so the operator do not need to 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 do special calculation just uh, uh, i will show you on the on the movie later on how the process is easy 
Below on the pictures, uh, on these two pictures, we have a vertical system. The, the one on the, the picture on the left side shows how to test the uh, screw in different materials like wood. And on the, on the right side, we have again uh, the uh, force sensor. So we can use it also for, um, to, to determine the friction coefficient. But uh, uh, we can test uh, on this uh, on this machine also the self-forming screws and self-tapping screws. So for the producers, it's necessary to know how big torque is uh, is created by the screw during the the fastening process. Here, I want to say a few words about the uh, standards. So. There is uh, some international standards which are uh, explaining us or support us as engineers how to uh, how the the process should be uh, should be tested, especially focus on the on the torque tools. In this case, we have some standards uh, here on this on this picture on this slide. We can see the standards. Uh, explaining how to test tools. The first one, ISO 5393, describing uh, the process uh, of the test of testing of process uh, rotary tools. The others uh, like VDI, VDE. So the VDI is a German uh, engineer organization which creates many standards for the for the automotive industry, which is used also in our in our region. So uh, here are also described how to test uh, the tools, what kind of what, yeah, what kind of tools we have. There is uh, strict uh, dif uh, differentiation between different kind of tools. Uh, so they design a special uh, testing methods, and we can we can follow all these instructions. Uh, the last one we can see in the bottom is the, the special uh, procedure and ISO, um, ISO standard 6789, which uh, describe how to, um, how to test uh, only the torque ranges. It doesn't matter, is it the, the uh, electronic range or, uh, or mechanic click range? So all of them, they are described there in this in this uh, standard, and there is also described the method how to uh, calibrate uh, this specific uh, torque tool. So there is uh, our answer to to these uh, standards. So our company. Uh, produce a special equipment which allows to measure tools and and keep the the tools uh, under the under the control uh, during the during the process so on the top uh, you can see the system which is called uh, certest it's uh, it's the system for the tool testing of every uh, drive tool it means electric pneumatic and uh, and even a mechanic wrench a tool can be tested on this uh, special uh, special system so in that in that uh, in that uh, frame we have built in a hydraulic simulators so the simulator is a special construction when we have a hydraulic brake with, together with the, uh, with the uh, for, uh, sorry, torque transducer. And when the rotary tool is tested, the brake is stopping the, the tool. And during the, uh, this process, we measure, uh, we measure the, uh, the torque uh, until the, the final torque is reached and the tool is stopped. The, the process is, is monitored, and then you can you can see the the curve uh, on the screen. All these uh, data are uh, stored on the computer. Then after the uh, after the test process, you can create uh, the uh, calibration certificate using the the special software. And 
on the bottom, we have uh, another system, which is called Calitest. Calitest in this uh, in this setup has a two uh, two different units. The small one is up to 50 newton meter. The bigger the biggest one can be 1,000 or even extended to 1,500 to measure electronic ranges and also to measure uh, and test uh, click ranges. So the process is uh, automatic. The operator uh, can place the uh, the tool on the on the frame and start the the process, and then automatic head, which is under the under the table, rotate the uh, the sensor and uh, and determine the the measuring process. Doesn't matter. It is 10 repetitions, 50 repetitions, or 100. Uh, after the after the measuring process, the certificate is also printed out. So all these equipments they use the same software, which we which we call Zeus, and uh, all of them can can be connected to to the server and manage from uh, from one uh, central central point. So it's it's really helpful if you want to have uh, to to control uh, the process. Uh, Quality assurance process from uh, from one place. Even this small uh, small uh, inspect pro system has the uh, possibility to connect to the to the PC where the uh, choice uh, Zeus, uh, Zeus uh, software is uh, is installed, and then the data from Zeus can be transferred to the to the unit, and also the uh, measure. Measuring data from the unit to Zeus can be transferred back to the to the computer. So here are some uh, some explanation about the uh, traceability of the process. So on the bottom of the pyramid, we have the uh, production standards, which are all the tools, uh, torque tools we we use for production, like uh, uh, wrenches. And nut runners, some sensors to to measure to measure in process. So we we say this is this is used during the the production uh, production uh, phase. On the top of that, we have uh, our measuring uh, measuring uh, units and sensors, which can support the uh, quality assurance uh, process and. All the uh, all the tools from the uh, from the production area can be measured and can be uh, tested on this uh, on these systems, and we can confirm the good uh, good uh, quality of the of the production uh, production sensors, or we can prove that they are they are uh, in the in the bad shape, so that they should be they should be replaced or they should be uh, Report. On the top of the uh, of this uh, of this level, we have uh, our accredi accredited laboratory. So it means uh, accredited laboratory means that they uh, they are directly use the uh, national standard. They are accredited by the by the national organization. So uh, once a year, also once a few years. Uh, they compare the results. Uh, so the laboratory is is. Uh, Audited by the uh, by the major uh, uh, national laboratory and all these uh, systems and sensors, they are uh, calibrated and and compared to the to the national standards. So in this case, we have uh, we are sure that uh, the process is traceable traceable and all these. Uh, and, uh, all this information they are described also on the calibration certificate where we we have the information about the accredited uh, accreditation or number of the uh, for uh, for the laboratory but also the uh, the basic information about the system or the the sensor uh, which was used for uh, test each of the uh, each of the uh, uh, of the machine or uh, or tool. 
Now a few words about the process capability test because uh, in process uh, measuring we have of course on one hand uh, we have a tool but we cannot uh, remember about the the parts and components of the joints and also the the conditions uh, in the uh, in the production area but also the the people which are uh, uh, which are or working on the production so here we have some uh, in process uh, in process measuring uh, standards and they are described uh, exactly how to how to perform of course our uh, our systems uh, they are uh, working according to the standard and uh, support the uh, quality local quality assurance organization to to make this process easier to to uh, store the data and uh, also print out the, the certificate uh, of the um, after the process of the measuring in the in process measuring. So how it works? Uh, we, as I said, we have a special tools, special uh, um, systems, and uh, and we can go to the after after the process measuring. So if we if we want to to test a bolted joint after the relaxation, I don't know, maybe one hour or 24 hours, and we want to confirm that the the final torque uh, is this or the final torque after a certain time is the same like the residual torque, uh, then we can we can use analyze uh, analyze range in this case. Uh, another method is to uh, to use the uh, rotary torque sensor during the production. So we can see here the uh, rotary tool with the with the additional uh, additional sensor torque transducer between the the joint and the and the tool. So we can confirm all this uh, if the the torque applied by the tool is the same we have on the uh, on the sensor. All these data they are uh, they can be uh, acquired on the inspect pro system. Then we can transfer it to the to the PC computer and study on uh, Zeus uh, Zeus software, which is uh, very useful for very develop uh, uh, capability studies and also easy to to print out the certificate from all these uh, all these measurements so you can imagine that uh, having the uh, analyzing data for 3 5 15 years it's not so easy using for example a simple uh, excel file but uh, this is the reason why we designed a special 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 software for that uh, for that application Here you have the examples of the just the summary of uh, of that what uh, what I tell uh, tell you just before how we use the uh, our systems in each uh, stage of the of the production process. So the analyze system support the quality and also the for example bolt producers to keep the uh, friction under control. We have a third test system which guarantee that the uh, uh, process tools they, they can be they can be tested in the uh, uh, on time and and of the of the process uh, of the quality process if we have a ready ready product we can confirm uh, by after process measuring with the analyze range the uh, the torque is it is there any any issue with the relaxation for example after the after the time and if we confirm if we use all these tools and uh, and uh, procedures during the production process we can be almost sure that uh, we have control under under the, the production Now I want to tell you something more about uh, our Inspect Pro system. Uh, in uh, in each of the uh, stage of production, we can 
we can use that system for process validation as we as i tell you just a few slides before then we can test also the the total friction uh, which using the uh, special additional uh, force sensor and also we can test uh, the a mechanical range with the stationary stationary uh, transducer and uh, print out the, the certificate. So how is it possible? The system inspect pro uh, is uh, two channel, uh, so it it can be it can be uh, equipped with uh, two analog channels uh, to to receive data. And it's necessary, for example, to uh, measure friction. So for the friction, we definitely need to, to use uh, two channels for the analyze range and uh, force sensor. Then the special software module can calculate uh, the friction, friction value and inform the uh, user how big uh, friction is. If you want to, for example, test a tools, we can use uh, that uh, stationary transducer, which can uh, measure only torque. For other applications like uh, in-process measuring, we use a uh, rotary transducer, which can be also connected to, to one channel. All these data can be transferred to the, to the PC and as uh, uh, we can transfer the data as a text file and can be can be analyzed by the user uh, on on uh, on its own software but we can also uh, deliver a special software to to analyze data to uh, to make some uh, database uh, and collect data for uh, many measuring uh, uh, numbers and uh, and the pro and the, the, there is no limit of the uh, of the of the capacity especially for Zeus this is a special a special software designed for tool testing so uh, every uh, every measuring is stored there in the in the in the software and of course uh, if you want to back uh, to uh, for example six months before or one year before and check how this tool perform uh, in that time. Everything uh, can be stored in this in this database. So it's, it's very useful, especially for the uh, maintenance department. So here we have the example of the uh, real life uh, measuring. In this case, uh, we can see the measuring of the final torque uh, of the of the screw in different materials so definitely this is this is the uh, the application for uh, screw producers they use it very often to to measure final final torque of the uh, for each screw they produce and it's uh, it's quite easy because we use uh, we can use every kind of rotary tool and uh, uh, with the rotary transducer, the, the process is, is quite fast. So we have a movie here. I will. Yeah. So now the process is, is done and then if the parametrization was uh, was done, so we we can set up the uh, the expected target value. Of course, we do some uh, upper and uh, and lower lower limit. And if this uh, uh, measuring value is uh, in inside this uh, area of upper and lower limit, uh, we have uh, information to the operator on that the 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 final torque. Uh, uh, is okay. The, another uh, another example is measuring of the of the friction. So we use the same unit with different software module. 
to, to measure friction according to ISO 16047. And the process uh, is, uh, is quite easy. The only limit for this uh, simple portable system is the, that it can calculate only the uh, total friction. I will start the movie now. I think there is some delay. So from the front side, uh, we put the uh, bolt. On the back side, we use uh, insert with uh, with the nut. And the bolt is fastened by hand. So now we can go to the measuring mode, which uh, to, to this we, we need an analyze range to detect uh, torque. So with the analyze range, we measure torque. And uh, this in this black housing, we have a force sensor. So it measure force as you can see on the uh, on the analyze range there is a blinking led light so it shows shows to the operator when the final torque is is reached so now we confirm uh, only the the data about the screw, so like diameter and uh, diameter of the uh, of the bolt, diameter of the head. And then the calculation will be done automatically. Yeah, you can see now the total friction coefficient is 0 0.13. As you can see, you can observe the uh, you can analyze the the curve of the of the process. If you want to uh, make a deeper analysis, it's also possible. The data can be can be sent to uh, to the PC computer. You can create more develop analysis, especially with the special designed software like Test Expert. So there is much more. Uh, many more uh, many more uh, curves they are possible so you can create a, a relation between force and torque uh, torque and angle and uh, and many different uh, tables there is uh, uh, another example how to how we can use uh, inspect pro system uh, this is the example of uh, measuring of torque and testing uh, testing wrenches. In this case, we have a mechanical click wrench with the, uh, with the stationary transducer. All the parameterization can be, can be done here in this, uh, in this inspect pro system manually. And when the torque is reached, the click on the on the wrench is done, and the system can detect uh, the click of the mechanics uh, and the uh, and the clutch, and yeah, stop the the measuring. So now you can you can have the same like like before. We have a target value, and we have also the uh, upper limit and lower limit when the value is uh, between the limits so inside the, the limits the uh, information to the operator it's okay if it's uh, outside of uh, 
of this scope, then the information is not okay. It means that the tool should be should be repaired or replaced. Here is another example of the inspect inspection of the uh, of the process use uh, as uh, called in process measuring with the uh, rotary transducer. So we see there is uh, there is a driving tool like uh, battery battery uh, nut runner and between the the bolt and uh, and nut runner we have a uh, we have a torque transducer so we can measure a peak value and the relation between uh, between uh, torque and anger for example if the sensor has possibility to to measure the the angle So as you can see on this uh, on this movie, all these three bolts has been fastened, and now we can uh, analyze each of uh, of them separately to to see the curve, and then we can compare also like uh, three bubbles to see how big difference is uh, between each uh, each of them and all these. Uh, all these analyses they are possible on this small screen but again if you want to uh, analyze and create more develop uh, reports you can uh, send the data to the to the pc and now we have uh, uh, the, uh let's say after the, the after the process measuring with analyze range so we can measure in this uh, um, in this application, uh, the torque, which was applied to the uh, to the uh, bolted joint, which are here. So, like before, we we did three uh, three connections, and now we want to prove that there is, for example, no relaxation in this in this joint. So we can uh, test each of these. Uh, mm, bolted joint with the analyze range and confirm how big uh, the torque is still uh, in the in the joint so if there is no big difference it means that the process is uh, is stable and uh, the the torque which was designed by the engineer uh, was uh, was okay but if we have a big difference so there will be a drop of the of the uh, of the final torque or the residual torque after the certain time, let's say 12 hours, it means that something is wrong and uh, the production process uh, should be uh, should be uh, reconsidered. Yeah. So in this case, you see that the the bolt was moved in the direction uh, clockwise, 4.7 degree, and uh, the final uh, final torque, or the sorry, the res residual torque was 7.8 because uh, that is the, the uh, that is the value we we want to we want to uh, prove and we want to measure. And here is some uh, calculation uh, of that, uh, some basics about the, the calculation, because uh, according to VDI, VDE standard, there are few different uh, methods of, uh, of the uh, uh, carry on turning measurement, but we think, or we know, so it's, it's proven that the, the most developed is the change of gradient. So it means that the, uh, during the parametrization, we set the final angle, like alpha two, 
and the operator is uh, is turning clockwise until reach the the uh, target angle. So when it's reached, when it's reached, then the uh, calculation is done by the uh, by the software and computer, and detect the uh, residual torque, which is different than sometimes is different than the breakaway. Uh, if we have a big uh, influence of the of the static friction in the joint, so we are more interested about the residual torque, which is uh, which value is is uh, uh, closer to the real value of the applied uh, torque during the process. So that this is the quite uh, quite developed method of the measuring carry on uh, carry on turning according to VDI method. So as you can see, we can measure uh, all the process uh, with the, with a quite uh, simple uh, portable system. So having such a big number of data, it would be good to have some uh, software which can uh, store these uh, values and also make a statistical uh, analysis. So as I said, we designed it or our specialists uh, um, produced a special software, Zeus, to, it's actually a big database with the special uh, calculation uh, modules where you can store the data, you can print out the certificates and also make something like your process capability study. So analyze the, the uh, tool behavior during the, the long time. So definitely this is the big uh, support for the uh, for the process control for quality control engineers and also for uh, for maintenance engineers to observe how the tool uh, behave in the long time and then they can predict when it will need to to be repaired. And here we have some uh, basic information about the uh, data, uh, technical data of the of the uh, system. So as you can see, it's not that big. So the, the screen uh, is 10, 10 inches. The resolution is 16 bit. Uh, as I said, the, we can connect two analog channels to uh, to this system. The uh, internal memory is uh, is limited only to four gigabytes, but uh, if there is too many data, we can export data as a uh, ex uh, sorry as a text file or as a special file. To the data can be can be transferred to to the special designed software like Zeus or Test Expert. Uh, 